So as we start out on this journey for 2019, wow, 2019, we're going to start being mindful of the amazing little people who are in our service. And so each week, we're going to create an, a little bit of an idea for them to take home and for you to take home with them. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about Scripture or about the Psalms. Now, the Psalms are these great little bits of wisdom that we can take with us as we continue on this journey. You know, sometimes we pick up the whole Bible and it's a little daunting, but if you take it apart a little bit, it's a little easier to pick up. So today, the scripture text we're going to focus on for the little people is, Your word is a lamp to my path and a light unto my feet. Now, what is God's word? God's word is love. God's word is, is uh, present with us. Not yet, not yet, no lights yet. Uh, but your word is a light to my feet, a lamp to my feet, and a light unto my path. So little people, what is this? Come on. Oh, you're brilliant, big people, yes. And you know what's great about a flashlight is when you have a flashlight, a flashlight can help you along the path, right? Can help you along the journey. But you know what? You got to have batteries for a flashlight, right? Sometimes those batteries go out. Sometimes you're kind of lost and you don't know what to do. So what the psalmist is trying to say to us here today is, you know what? God's love is a light on the path. Psalms tell you that over and over again, and that's the word, parents. So you can take them into little tiny chunks and share them like this. So essentially what it's saying is you don't have to depend on human batteries. You don't have to depend on anything else if it gets dark and scary on the journey. All you have to do is remember you have God's love, and that's all that matters. All right. All right, we're going to continue forth now. Again, we're going to look at Psalms and Psalms in the journey. Thank you, Lee for your help on that. So, uh, and the other psalm we're going to look at is just a little one too. I know there are books out there, parents. You can pick up these things and share them with your kids. We're going to look at psalms throughout this month, little teeny bits like that so you can take with it. The other little scripture text we have here today is Psalm 16, 11. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. So that's kind of our two focus thoughts for right now today. So God's love or God's word is a light to your path. And uh, that indeed, just to know that God is present with us on this path of, li path of life can absolutely fill us with joy. Uh, my brother has a place in Brown County. And um, it's one of those places that you set the GPS up and you're all ready to go and you get off of 65 and the GPS starts laughing at you. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, right? So for the first couple of years while he was down there, I would spend a lot of time trying to reprogram and try to figure it out. But the truth is, is the GPS just will never get us to Brown County. And there's a place on the journey, and it is one of those journeys where my brother will say, okay, so what we need to do now is, you know, there's a red mailbox, watch for it, and then you turn here and you do this and you do that. That's the directions that you get. But there is one place on the journey where you have to kind of catch this kind of way off the path that way, and that'll take you kind of in an awkward way straight to his house. Or if you go straight, you end up in the Brown County State Park, and then you wind your way around, and eventually you end up there as well. I have to tell you, I always freaked out when I was on that journey. I'd be long before the turnoff for my brothers, and I'd start freaking out, saying, it's got to be here somewhere, it's got to be here somewhere, and I'd turn around, and I'd get all freaked out, because that's how people who use GPS all the time kind of function now. It wasn't until I rode down there with my dad once that I realized that GPS never crosses his mind. He's just going to my brother's. He never at one point says, do I need to turn here? Do I need to turn here? Where's the red mailbox? He just goes to my brother's. Now, every time I have gone there with my dad, I have to admit, I have no idea exactly how we get there. If he goes through Brown County State Park or if he goes on the road to the side, I just know that when I'm in my dad's car, I get there. And do you know why I know I don't know how to get there? It's because I'm actually paying attention to the journey I'm actually paying attention to the beautiful countryside. I'm actually kind of paying attention, and it makes a difference. 
Every time I go down there, I can't help but think about the Robert Frost poem. Everybody, you had to learn that in college, right? Remember, two roads diverged in a yellow wood. I could share it with you right now, but actually, in uh, I think it's the Netherlands, there was a great commercial where they used it. I think it's Ford. And I'm going to let uh, the commercial speak for the Frost poem. Now, do me a favor and watch and notice the guy who is at the beginning of the journey and where he is at the end of the journey, and uh, keep that in mind. Let's take a look at this. Two roads diverged in the yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveller. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, and leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood and I. I took the one less travelled by. And that has made all the difference. notice that? So the guy who gets in the car at the end is the same guy standing at the fork of the, in the road in the woods. Now, isn't it incredible to think, if you're like me, that perhaps this famous poem, this famous Robert Frost poem that we've been paying attention to for a hundred years, is actually a little bit misinterpreted? I mean, one of the most memorable lines is, of course, right? And I took the road less traveled, and that has made all the difference. But that's not really the line that's most important. What's most important is in days and days hence past. So when these days are gone, this is when you'll understand what it means to take not only the road less traveled, but any path that you may travel. We get so focused on how I took the one less traveled by, and that has been made all that has made all the difference. But what's really important is the shall be telling part. In days hence I shall be telling. Equally lies in the leaves both roadways. So the road he will later call less traveled is as equally traveled or as importantly traveled as the other one. See, the two paths are interchangeable, ages and ages hence, that his decision has made all the difference. And if he had actually taken the other path, that would have made all the difference too. We like to focus on that line, and I took the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And I think I've determined why. Because we like to look back and either blame ourselves or celebrate ourselves for the path we decided to take. We are kind of people who look back and say, well, thank goodness, or I took this path, or why in the world did I take this path? And that has nothing to do with the poem. The poem is about the journey, not the destination. If you came to the garden today, with your same GPS and your same path, well, you might be a little out of sorts as you come here. There are some things that are different, and we are at this point in the journey, and some of those things have been thrust upon us, one service, um, but other things have not changed, have they? I mean, you made it clear there are some things that cannot change. Donuts, bagels, and coffee of our primary concern. They have not changed. 
But there are other things that have changed. And what's interesting to me is this being a a time of transition at the garden, it's important to remember that the path and the journey is what's important. Now, there are things on this path and on this journey we will take with us. And then there are other things that we'll explore where God is calling next. You'll notice some new things today. Today we are introducing a logo, and I want to say it's a new logo, but it isn't. It is a logo that is made up of all of your input, and it is a logo that has been designed based on the things that you said to us over months. And then we gave those things to people who do those kind of things, and this is what they came up with. And what's so amazing about a logo and this logo is each element of it has your fingerprint on it. Because you had so many elements of being the garden that were so important to you that we wanted to make sure that what we put out there is reflective of that. You wanted to make sure that we are a garden that is open to all people. And we recognize that those people come from many different paths. Bill has made this beautiful sample of uh, the logo right down here. Yes, the bagels are the same, and the donuts are the same, and the coffee is the same, and the good earth band is the same, and the videos today are a little more thoughtful. Don't worry, we will have very inappropriate videos in the future. But there are things that are important to us as we take this next step, because hence, days to come, it will be reflected in who we are in the years to come. I want to share that at the heart of this message today is the idea that we have all come from many paths. And that journey we have in faith leads us in a variety of different directions. And what's most important to us as gardens, gardeners is that as long as that direction leads us to transform the world with the love of God, then it's okay with us. No matter where the path leads, there are things that we want as we continue as a community of faith, and each one of these blocks represent that. We want to continue to explore and to engage and to be inspired. We want to continue to reflect on who we are, and we want to continue to renew. We all want to be the people that God has called us to be with our individual missions, but then as our, with our collective mission as well. We also realize at the heart of the garden is the recognition that there are many different people from many different paths with many different traditions, and we wish to honor and love and care for all God's children. As we were reminded in the scripture text this morning that we know that God will make a path of life for us, and it will bring joy when we are in God's presence. We also talk to the kids about the recognition that God's word is a lamp unto our path and a light, or a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We don't have a corner on that kind of thing. In the Muslim faith, there's a very similar sentiment, sentiment, and that is not what's so interesting is both of those texts seem pretty individualistic. In the Muslim faith, it's more important indeed that it be communal. And in, when Jesus comes around, the community piece is as well important. The journey we take is not just for us, but it's for the whole of the community. As one iman put it in the Muslim faith is, when we ask God to guide us to a straight path, we are asking God to supplement our efforts to attain guidance with God's help. So, really pretty similar to our own. Do you know for the Buddhist, the path, the journey for the Buddha led him to a Bodhi tree, right? And underneath there he sat and he found joy because he had knowledge, he had life, he had experience. Well, guess what? The Christian faith also leads us to a tree, a cross, and at that tree we recognize that in the midst of joy in this life, there is also suffering, And guess what? In the midst of this conditional world and the suffering, we don't have to do this on our own. We have a Jesus who understands, who shares the experience with us, and never leaves us to face our trials alone. I believe that Frost picks up on all of these religious ideas in his poem. He does point out that 
this is not being an individualistic choice. It's actually a choice about who we are in the midst of our society. And why do I say that? Because this poem was actually written after Frost would spend time walking with a buddy of his who was a poet whose name is in here somewhere. And he was a romantic poet and and he was, Thomas was his name. And Thomas was a romantic poet. And so they would take daily walks. And as they took these daily walks, um, Thomas would say to Frost at the end of the walk, oh, we should have gone this way. Because this way I could have shown you this and we could have done this. And, or the next day he would say, I think we should go this way so I can show you this or that. And what Frost is really writing about in this poem are the amazing adventures that they have been on and that the conversation and that the time together is what has made his life what it is and how different his life is, that he has had this friendship, that the path led him to meet Thomas, that the path guided him to a place like the UK, that the path brought with it a new experience and a new adventure, and that has made all the difference. Now, we all know that setting off on a journey and not knowing where it's going to lead is pretty daunting. Yet time and time again, we read that amazing things happen to people who are willing to set off on journeys without a predetermined uh, destination. Today is uh, Epiphany in the Christian calendar, and that's the day we remember the wise men coming to bring the gifts to uh, Jesus, ushering in a new way of being, an epiphany. They followed a star, and they followed that star, recognizing that they wanted to be at the place where love had started. I don't think they were actually very clear on which way the path would take. They had no GPS, but they were following their hearts and following love, even to the point where they journeyed a different way on the way out. It's the same for Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph had no comfort zone on the night that the baby Jesus was born. They were out of sorts, out of home, away from everything they knew. And when they ushered this little baby into the world, all they knew is that their lives would forever change. And they were open to the powerful possibilities of love that Jesus brought with him. See, that's what epiphany is all about. It's not being predetermined on exactly what we want on the journey, but being open to what the journey holds for all of us. This past week, I had an idea of how it was that I wanted to spend my week. I had a week off, looking forward to it. Going to spend a little time with Netflix. Going to go to a couple good parties. And that changed. And let me tell you, if I had stayed on the agenda that I had planned, I would have had a miserable, horrible week. But instead, I recognized that the journey was taking me someplace else and someplace I didn't want to be. And that was being concerned about the health of a parent, that was being in a place where I grew up, that I know pretty well and I didn't want to go back to. And if I had really focused on that, it would have been a miserable week. But instead, I recognized that I'd been reading the Frost poem, and I recognized that this journey isn't all about me. It's about the experience. And guess what happens when you open yourself up to that? You can be in the exact same space, but have an opportunity to share with a niece, a great niece who you don't know all that well, and share an amazing conversation and learn about the youth to, of today. And there's great promise for the future, my friends. You can spend time with your parents and witness how much they love each other and what 66 years of marriage can bring to it when you reach a time of crisis. I give God thanks for Robert Frost and for the ability to be mindful that this journey takes us all kinds of places. And if I get too stuck on my GPS and my destination, I'm going to miss the journey, and that will be awful. I picked up The Road Less Traveled by um, Scott Peck this past week. It's 25 years old. I want to encourage you to look at it again. It is an amazing book with lots of beautiful knowledge in it that you really can take into the new year with you. 
He says this in that book. He says, the truth is that our finest moments are most likely to occur when we are feeling deeply uncomfortable, unhappy, or unfulfilled. For it is only in such moments propelled by our discomfort that we are likely to step out of our ruts and start searching for different ways or truer answers. I guess today, I've experienced stepping out of my rut about what I thought was important. I guess today, we as the garden are finding a way to step out of a rut. And guess what? We can take comfort in the fact that it's the journey and not the destination that's most important. My question to all of us today is, how are we going to live into this journey? In what ways might it be similar to the past, and in what ways might it lead us to new and exciting adventures? How is it that God will call us forth on this next spot of the journey in transforming the world with love? I want to encourage you today not to be mindful of whether or not you like the colors or if this means anything to you or that the bulletin has changed. I want you to focus on the fact that God is at work in this journey and that God indeed is going to work through this experience in some profound way so that in the future I shall be telling with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and the garden said, Amen.